even as she takes over to the glory and honor of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mbaya wa tunalala. Praise the Lord. Mbaya wa kuna usingizi. Praise the Lord. Those who are ready to receive the word. Hallelujah. There's this beautiful song we used to sing eh? when we were young. I've got this joy, 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 joy. Tupandisha kiki dogo tu. Otherwise, down in my life. Amen. Let's have our children come. Joy, joy, joy. It's never too early to start Sunday school. Amen. You know she can say amen. She can say amen. I did her the other day. I told her amen. She was like, that is amen. When I was told this song, when I said, when we sat down in my heart, I didn't know how to, I didn't understand English by then. Eh? When I was young. So they said, <laughs> why are you laughing? Man? <laughs> so when they said, I've got this joy, 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 joy. So it sat down in my heart, meaning again, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. <laughs> okay, let's sing it properly for the children even as they go. Give us a beautiful key for our babies. Yes. Play, play. We are waiting for you. Send you. We are waiting for him. Send you. Hey. School at Anzacool, prepare chocolates. Hey, see the big one singing. I've got this joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got this joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. I've got this joy. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Way out down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got this joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Stretch out your hands and bless these beautiful saints as they go to their class. Father, I give you praise and adoration. I thank you for these wonderful saints even as they go to their class. Lord, we bless them in the mighty name of Jesus that they go, they study, they understand what they are studying. They have fun with their teacher, King of Glory. They listen to the teacher and they understand the true gift of life that you have given them, O King of Glory. I bless you. Even when they are as young as babies, Shana, yes, Lord, they understand. They understand, Lord. Lord, all of them, they, they capture your word and they live it, Lord, and you are the one teaching them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Good girl. Have fun. Enjoy your class. Bye-bye. Yes, go eat. Now for the rest of us, if you need to use the rest, restroom, I give you one minute. If you need to, for anything, otherwise uh, get out your notebook your pen and your Bible and put away your phones. Amen. Or put them on silent so that when the word is going on, we don't have distractions. You will not be distracted. If they call you and it's urgent, just tell them I'll call you back. Unless if it's really, really, really urgent. Amen. 
But otherwise, put our, we put our phones, we study, we get out our notebook, our Bible, we go to the washroom right now. So when the bread is being ministered, no moving out. So we study and we are disciplined. Amen. Pastor Mwangusi, we welcome you. I did not give us permission to sit down, no. <laughs> we welcome you, but it's okay, you can be seated. Let us appreciate our pastor as he comes to give us the word for today. We love you, we adore you. Thank you so much for giving yourself. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I'm glad I am to share the word of God. It's been quite uh, a while. Last Sunday we weren't able to do quite a lot because of time, which was okay. Amen. Nevertheless, today we shall continue and share. The part that I didn't share concerning uh, the essence of family, I will share it in our next family meeting because I realize we ought to be done with uh, understanding redemption very soon and then we do something else. But I realize if I keep cutting through, we won't finish. It's quite a lot. We won't be done per se. Nevertheless, we shall quit. Where we shall quit. Where I will know and be sure ya kwamba we have a good foundation. You know, uh, when you have a good foundation, growth is easy. Growth is easy when you have a good foundation. And so since the things that we are taught here I'll tell you something. These things are quite enough for you. If you choose to just feed on these things, even if you choose the whole day, the whole week, the whole month, they are enough. Amen? Why am I saying they are enough? It's because as you learn, when we, now like we are going to share in the next one hour or so, you see, it is one hour. But if you are a good student, in that one hour, because you, you, you won't tell me that you will get 100% of what I'm speaking as I am speaking it now. But when you go back home, and then you listen to the teaching, that's another one hour. But because you are a, 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 a careful student, you won't be able to just listen all through marathon, no. A student pauses, rewinds, makes notes. You'll even correct some of the notes that you've written, that you're going to write now. When you go home, you will correct some of that of those notes because then you realize, oh, that is how a student grows. Amen? Manu, you can push that thing in your mouth. Now, if you will be comfortable, okay. So that you don't stress. Me, I have been seated there. So let it be your time to... So as a diligent student, you realize that one hour, you will take like four days before you digest the entirety of it. And how many teachings do we have in a week? The short teaching that, they, that is given during the prayer fellowship, that is one. It can be like 10, 15 minutes, 20. Then there is this that we are now receiving roughly one hour. And Tuesday, like the one that teacher Lorraine has been sharing, roughly one hour. Thursday, roughly one hour. Friday. Friday is tricky because you never know when the word is. So we can say two hours for Friday. How many hours are those? One, two, three, four, five. About what, five hours and some minutes. Just teaching. So let me ask you, how many? Why am I in the spirit of those that have been sharing from in the morning? 
Let, let me just share the word. Let's go back to understanding redemption. And where I ended last, the last time I was here, we were speaking about being unveiled. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. We should go back there and start from there. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, KJV, please. KJV says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass. If you are watching while they put in KJV, they are speaking as a mirror. Glass is in the sense of the ability to be able to see the reflection of who you are. How many of you see something else when you look in the mirror? You see yourself, right? Now, the mirror of the believer is the word of God, the written word of God, as compiled in the 66. That there is no controversy about it that this contains the word of God. Of course, there are, there are accounts of other people. Even the devil spoke in the volume of this but right within there is the word of God. Amen? So, when we behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord. Scripture says, verse 18, the book of John. Let me lay this foundation so that we can go to verse 18, the book of John. First, John chapter 1, sorry. John chapter 1 verse 18. Scripture says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now, we are beholding the glory of the Lord, whom no man has seen, but who has declared Him? Who has declared Him? The one that no man has seen. I want you to be an active class. Who has declared the one that no man has seen? No, I, I, I want us to watch properly. Yeah? If, 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 if it is too hot, I'll ask the ushers to open the windows for you. excuses. Nataka tushike kitu leo. He says, no man has seen God at any time. So people that would come then and tell them, you know, I've seen God. For anyone to see God, scripture says the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father he has declared him so who if anyone is to have an opportunity to see God or to interface with God who is the way the begotten son now we are seeing that but we all with unveiled faces now in 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So the glory of the Lord, you can behold it. The glory of God is not distinct from God. Yet no man has seen God. But you are able to behold the glory of God. Beholding is not oversight. You see as a car like when, you're, when you've gone for, for motor racing. And you see a, a car racing past and goes swing. No, that is not how you behold to behold means there is ample time. There is enough space. There is concentration. So God, you're not seeing him in a rush. Praise the Lord. Your association with God is not in a rush. Beloved, you are not running to see God because any time an aquacha. No, you are at peace. That is why you behold. And that is why you behold as in a glass. Meaning as you behold his glory, you are describing yourself. If you want to see kama umeparara ama umepaka mafuta vizuri. Si unaenda mbele ya kio na unajiangalia. Si ndiyo? You are sure that what the mirror will give you is the perfect reflection of who you are. Praise the Lord. So it means when you behold as in a mirror the glory of God, my friend, what you see in a mirror, what you see in a mirror is a reflection of who you are. 
And so today we want to understand that those that have come into the redemption of God, in their reflection, actually when they are beholding the glory of God, God has reflected who they are to them. So you build confidence. That is why you watch yourself in a mirror and then you be like this. Because you come out knowing you are very perfect. You can walk. And then the person who never even comes around maybe up here to greet anyone that day, if they are sure today, ni meva. That day they will come. Hello pastor, how are you? The intention is pastor, you see. I even watched myself in the mirror and this is how I look. Hello pastor. You'll go to another person and you greet them because you want them to see. Yesterday we were joking with someone and we were telling them, you know, a time will come when you'll just be saying, hello. The intention is not that they may wave at you. You want them to see something. You see? So there are some things. Why? Because you are sure. When I've watched myself in the mirror, this is how I look. So listen. But we all with open face beholding. Beholding what we could not behold earlier. Because we did not have Jesus. When you did not have Jesus, there was no ability in you. In Hebrews we are told that when, 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 when Moses came from the mountain, he came with veiled face. Uh, even here, just right here. Why should we have to go to Hebrews? Here, before we reached verse 18, whenever Moses came down, they could not understand because his face was veiled. They could not interface with the glory. The glory which was actually passing. But right now when we behold in the mirror because Christ Jesus has given himself to die for us, we behold a glory which cannot be overcome. And that is why in your beholding, there is the ability for you. Scripture says so he says we when we could not behold earlier because we had no ability to see God you remember when Moses was asking show me your glory then what did God tell him no one can see me and they remain alive that is why you no longer live Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 he has told us you no longer live. Why? Because you have seen God. How many of us have seen God? How many of us are okay? How many of us are born again? Don't fear. Just raise your hands up. Now you can put them down. How many of us have seen God? If you're putting your hand up, put it up. Vizuri. Okay. I think I should organize a class for the rest of you that have not put your hands up. A special one. But anyway, in simple terms, when we are studying the things concerning God, we do not study li- we, we do not study physical things. One is if you will. Scripture has said, verse 18, John chapter 1, that no one has seen God. The only begotten son. eh? Do you know this song which goes like, You know that song? Do you sing it? To see God is to interface with him even through the person Christ Jesus. Through his word. Through his word. Let me show you this. In the book of uh, 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 let me remember it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it in Matthew? Hmm. Okay, I should see it 
If I don't see it, I will feel bad. see it before the service ends because I want us to see it and I want us it's not here in my notes Holy Spirit remind me before the service ends say amen <laughs> now no man has seen God at any time the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father he has declared him without the son no one is able to see God yet but we all with unveiled faces meaning what was the hindrance that was there the very one that caused men not to see god and what was the strength of the veil the law so men see themselves distant from of god because of the law my friend the law is not sinful the law is actually perfect but in its perfect in its perfectness the law is not able to make you perfect rather the law is able to make you realize that you need a perfecter so because of Christ you are able now with an unveiled face to behold back to second corinthians so friends there is a challenge that now believers have even when they have already received Christ the challenge that i have seen even in the question i've asked us every one of us believes in this house ya kwamba tumeokoka but we do not know ya kwamba tumemwona yesu why because with our with our physical eyes we have not seen jesus walking and i tell you if any of you saw him physically you would maybe cease to live as in hata hii kumze ambayo uko nayo ungeipoteza because the physical man cannot fathom the greatness of the spiritual person that Christ Jesus is but yet he has made you to say that i have seen him because he has revealed these things to where to me friends you have seen god in the sense that right now you belong in the inside of him praise the lord are you able to see the walls of this of this house that we are seated in you are seated and I'm standing in you are able because you are found in the inside of this walls mtu akiwa nje ya hii nyumba hawezi akaona these things the the the, the curtains you are nje you are inside you are able to see Christ Jesus because you are in the inside of him now there is another aspect to it because you are you are as well found in, you are as found in the inside of him as he is found in the inside of you meaning you are able to see him inside and out so you see him not with your physical eyes praise the lord hallelujah we are told in the book of romans that you know what we live how not according to what the eyes feed us because in looking at the feeding of the eyes that is where carnality stems from praise the lord we sang a song here that to to lisema ya kwamba when you believe that word right there is hell eternal hell forever and that is why we are speaking about redemption and this redemption is eternal friends you are able to be changed into the same image the image does not change but you are changed into that very one friends when you study the word and then you say he says i have given you power over unclean spirits to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease this is in matthew chapter 10 verse 1 When you see that and there was be, there was a weakness 
as you behold with an unveiled face. What is to behold with an unveiled face? To behold with an unveiled face is to behold with the understanding ya kwamba tayari umeokoka. Not to become. Praise the Lord. So when you're studying the word, do not study an alien thing. This word is not alien to you, the believer. It is your description. You don't read the Kenyan constitution to become Kenyan. You read the Kenyan constitution to know your rights. Right? You read it to do what? Not to become. You are already Kenyan. You read it to know your rights as a. Many people do not want to know their rights as believers. And even when they read. They read as though. Ah you know there are some Kenyans are more Kenyan than others. No. Ni venye tu kuna kitu wamekijua na wewe haujajua ba? Bado. Praise the Lord. The challenge is now, them that have known this constitution, kuna unaona mawakili wakisimama mahakamani. There is a way they speak. And they make you look like you don't know anything. It is because they know those things. If you knew, you would also speak like them. They are speaking like that because they know. You are not speaking like that because you don't know. Ndiyo kwa mana wanakulanga pesa yako. Now, where there is lawyer, put that. Ndiyo kwa mana wanakulanga pesa yenu. Ju wamejua kitu na wewe haujaju. Praise the Lord. So you are studying the word as a description of who you are. The difference between the physical mirrors and the mirror which is the word is that the picture of who you are has already been printed into that mirror. Every time you go into that mirror it will show the same picture. It will show the same reflection. The same and then your mind starts to get transformed even as you say oh kumbe the word says this i am 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 perfect i am loved i am esteemed i am blessed i belong to god no weapon against me i am loved of god i am justified i am forgiven and so you start to stir up yourself even in your most holy faith and you pray even in the spirit of god praying in the spirit is not praying in tongues per se Praying in the spirit is praying in the knowledge of God because the spirit of God leads us into all truth. The truth is the word of God. The word of God is Christ Jesus. Amen. When people want to feel deep, they want to make to speak to you things that make you feel like hey, me I don't know so I can't be in the spirit. Then you are not born again because every believer is in the spirit. Say I'm in the spirit. So, we all Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. What happens to you when you behold? What happens to you when you behold? You are changed. There is a change that happens. You are not the kind that reads the word and there is no and there is no let me say palpable even in your mind. Change in as far as your mind is concerned. And so when you come here and we study the word of God you go back transformed, empowered and free. So what happens is we are, trans, we are changed into the same image. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? You see an image. What happens is you get transformed into that image. So when you're reading the word and the word says as far as the east is from the west, that is as far as I've cast your iniquities. I am transformed into that same image. Do you know a person that has no debt is a debt as in D E B T is the person that will you will see them there will be there will be a, a freedom in how they do their things. And a person who is troubled with a lot of those eh? even the slightest they have they won't think of buying something kujinaist unless he's someone that is so irresponsible. But a responsible indebted person. Every
every little one they will get, they will be thinking, let me cover this and this and this and this. But now, the debt that you owed, Christ Jesus has paid. And so it means, there is no fear in you getting transformed and changed into what you see in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So he says, but we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord. That is also another challenge. When men are looking into the word of God to study. Do you know that many of them, many of the times they only see condemnation? They only see how they are far away from God. They only see how distant they are from God. And instead of seeing that, okay, I have brought you near by my blood, by my own love. We've studied that in Jeremiah chapter 33. We've studied that and looked at it, Yakwamba, you've been brought back. And yet people, even after seeing that many of them run because they have seen, okay, hey, they are only seeing condemnation. Why? Because the vein is still on them. If you go back up a few verses, it says, even this day, when Moses is read, the veil still lies on their heart because it is taken away in Christ. That is what I believe verse 16 says. That veil is taken away in Christ. Praise the Lord. So when you behold, back to verse 18, when you behold there is a transformation that changes. I am telling you saints, I desire that you give yourself wholly to these things. Because it is the giving yourselves wholly to these things that builds you. This is not a, something that you learn on a Sunday and then unaenda unapambana na maisha the entire week without the knowledge of these things. Am I saying you won't be productive in the things that you do out there in the world? Yes, you have to be productive and indeed you'll be productive. But what happens is you are productive from the point of victory already. That you are victorious already and in your victory that is where now you go into productivity. So you enter your workplace in the morning when you're already victorious. You enter your business in the morning. You open up. But you are already victorious. Because the word has spoken. Sometimes you don't have a tangible physical reason. To smile. But the word has spoken. And so we say. Because you have said it. Then I will believe it. I won't care what men say. Praise the Lord. So we are changed into the same image. They are not different glories. Eh? Because he says from glory to glory. You're, they are not different glories. That okay now you, you occupy a glory. Then there is another glory. And so then someone starts to put a doctrine there. You know there are some people that have reached into a certain glory. Eh? That has to do with knowledge. Praise the Lord. Your position is a result of your knowledge. Eh? Amen. You find, you'll find a phone mechanic. They are seated on that chair repairing your phone. That is their glory because of the knowledge they have. It isn't a different level. You know, they were saying that if you um, I don't want you to take this in the sense of motivation of speaking. Let me give you this, eh? If you find fish, how many of us have been to rivers or lakes where you find a tree that has grown in the middle there? Eh, or in the middle of the lake? Small, you can't even, it can't even qualify to be called an island. Eh? Because the species, you can find just like one square meter and there's a tree that has grown there. How many of us? Oh, you haven't even ever seen a lake. Now we can be here and we've never seen a lake. And then you find birds there and you find some 
let me just stick on birds. And then you find fish jumping. And then you'll be like, look at these fish. They can't even take advantage of that tree. No fish is. You are so dumb, fish. You see birds are coming from the other side and they are climbing your tree. You don't even have the ability to climb this tree. You are so dumb. Do you think that will be true? That the fish is dumb? So the fish says, hey, I'm dumb. Okay, let me learn how they climb trees. But please teach me how they climb trees. Teach me how they climb trees. Friends, the glory of the fish is in its ability to stay in that water 24-7 without drowning. That is the glory of the fish. Now, if, you, if the fish starts to say, hey, I want the glory of being on a tree. That fish, that is when it will be dumb. But it is not dumb if you don't find it climbing on a tree. Because that is not where it has been placed. Now friends, when you became in Christ, when you came into Christ, scripture says, he molded you. You became his own workmanship. You are his product. Now, he says, those things, when he was making you, he had a plan for you. The same way fish was made that it might be in water without drowning. How many of us can be in water for five minutes? Just, you are just there. Enjoying life. How many of us? But sea fish, with ease, it does it. Put fish out here where you are enjoying yourself. It is uncomfortable. So when men are running, I want this glory, I want this glory, I want this glory, there is a glory made for you. And so you're growing in it. We were told here on Tuesday by teacher Lorraine that the boy Jesus there are other versions that say that. That the boy Jesus increased where? In wisdom and in and in stature. It is not wisdom that increased in him. The wisdom there is constant. Perfect knowledge. Hallelujah. But you in your giving yourself to those things, you increase in them and even in their productivity. That is why people go to school. And you increase in that because it is already there. Even them that say I'm inventing this or we are inventing this. It is because that knowledge has been already there. And mind you, there is nothing that God is going to speak that he has not spoken. Amen. So what I'm saying is, eh, God has made you for a good work. But that good work has already been made. Because it says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 that for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we may walk in them. Now, when you are changed into the same image, that same image is the good works which were prepared beforehand that we may walk in them that is the changing are we together? Friends, when you got born again, you got born again because already your destiny was made. So we can't sing songs like, come and change my destiny. Your destiny has been set. Eternal life. He says, very common verse, we can recite it together. Three, two, one, we go for God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Listen, that whoso, is it most of them, whosoever believes in him, what happens? So there is a, an assurance for, the, for anyone to escape perishing, you should only, so your beholding is actually believing. Your beholding is believing. So, should not perish, but let's finish that verse. So there is already what has been said for you. Everlasting life. That is your destiny. How many of us are not sure of their destinies? Your destiny is eternal life. Already said. Now, these things that you are pursuing in your careers, in your businesses, in your families, in your thing, 
all of those things, they are not your destiny. Amen. Your destiny is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Does it mean that you will not bear fruit in the affairs of the world here? You will bear fruit. You will be productive. In your being, you will be productive. And this I speak by the Spirit of God. That as you give yourself diligently to those things that you do, you will bear fruit in them in Jesus' name. So, you are changed into the same image. Not that there is an image which is made for you. So, the prayers of, Lord, please make for... Mm -hmm. We've sang a song here and we say, You have done what a man has done. You, mm -hmm. He has done whatever it is that he has to do. And so that song, you should sing it. You have done what no man has done. For you do what no man can do. So it is God that does things that no man can do. He has already made you. You know, people are looking for God to work for them. But God has done it for you. As you pray, you are praying to stir up yourself that you may see and receive what he has given. So actually your prayer to God should be that as you are changed into that same image, even as by the spirit of the Lord, from glory to glory, you jump in your knowledge and in the affirmation and in the acknowledgement of those things. Friends, many times the challenges that believers have are because they have not seen what God has made for them. When you see, you start to bear fruit. First Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll start from verse 1. Now listen. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Paul is saying, I beg that you should not be ignorant. Ignorance is a big challenge. Many of the struggles that church has, they would overcome them if they were not ignorant. Let me give you a few examples that you can relate with. How come you can struggle with your phone and you struggle with it? Something is not working. It is not functioning. You struggle with it. When, for those of you that have these Zenozebita you know, series, when you swipe, it is not sensing. And so you scratch your head. Usually what we do, you turn it, then you turn like this then, I don't know if you still do it, ta, 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 now like this one, ta, 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 and it's not working. For those of you that are so bold, you even do, shui, unarusha chini kidogo. Alafu inakata. Then you go to the repairman, and then they look at it, they look at it, they do a few things, maybe they open, and they return it to you, and it is working. It is because they are not ignorant. It disturbed you because you were ignorant. This disease, imenilemea, na na na. Si wenda hospitali. Aki hata si joi ni tafanya nini? Sui, 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 sui. And then you reach the hospital. There are those questions they ask you. How are you? Uh huh. So what happened? Na na Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Ni wewe ndio unajibu. Lakini, from your very answers, they will give you medicine na utapona. Kwa nini au kujipea hayo majibu na ujiandikie dawa? Because you were ignorant. Again, let me say, hapo ndo wezi wame, wameanza kutengeneza pesa. Unaenda, hey, you know this, hey, this, this, they, they do, usually do it I don't know if this will do it. Wednesdays. Unaenda. Muna panga na ini. Alafu kuna rumingine muna ingia. Moja kwa moja. Lakini kabla ufike pale. Kuna mahali unapitia. Uyu mutu kuna kitu wa mekijua. 
na wewe haujajua ndio kwa maana pesa yako huwa inakulwa kila saa because you are ignorant now that is where it is important chapter 4 in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 Let a man so consider us verse 1 as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God verse 2 Moreover it is required in in verse 1 he said let men consider us as servants and ministers and stewards of the mysteries of God Inaongelelea ile yenye tuliambiwa pale Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 what is commonly called the fivefold ministry i have labor to share about that fivefold ministry by the way so in verse 2 it is required let's read this together three to one we go moreover it is required in who are the stewards here the ministers of the gospel that a man be found that a man be found because it is in that being found faithful that i will reveal to you what is in the inside of you than to make you feel like wewe hauna na mimi nimejazwa and so i make you always working to be like pastor i want to have the glory of the pastor it is the glory of god that is at work in you that is at work in me the difference may be that i have because of knowledge yielded more so then my duty because i've been yielded is to make you yield as well so let's go back to chapter 10 moreover brethren i would note okay let's wait so that we can follow together moreover brethren i would note that you should be ignorant meaning it's possible that you are a believer and you are ignorant that is why when i asked if you're born again that is easy everyone yes but do you know what being born again means if you don't know and you are not persuaded that is when you'll not put up your hand if i say if i ask if you've seen god because you are ignorant i'm not abusing i'm be- giving a description turn to your neighbor with a very serious face tell them i would not that you should be ignorant some of you are smiling at them tell them i would not that you should be ignorant ah uh-uh. ah sasa ningependa uangalie mtu kwa macho mbia hivi I would not that you should be ignorant. Ebu we weka ya Kiswahili ndo watu wasi I hope Kiswahili version is not. Oh. Amejaribu ku Kwa maana ndugu zangu sipendi mkose kufahamu ya kuwa baba zetu sawa kwa maana ndugu zangu sikonde sipendi ukose kufahamu mwambie ndugu yangu sipendi ukose kufahamu please don't be ignorant now me i'm not joking about it i'm very serious the many challenges that church has stem from ignorance And the challenge is the world has a tendency not to like men that will tell them the truth afadhali 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 padre afadhali afadhali leo afadhali when i came to you i purpose that i should not know thing else but so i would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all passed through the sea next verse and were all baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea 
Next verse. And did all eat the same spiritual food. Next verse. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased. I explained this in the first in the first part when we were starting understanding redemption. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Why? For they were overthrown in the wilderness. God is not the kind that celebrates the destruction of anyone. So the reason why God was not well pleased is because they were overthrown in the wilderness. It is not his being not well pleased that caused them to be overthrown. But because they were overthrown, See, verse 1. We are under the cloud. He's speaking about the time of Exodus. What happened is that during day, there was a pillar of fire that formed above them to give them direction. They were covered and protected. Have I said during day? During night. During day. A cloud. Above them. And ahead of them. Protected. These are people that were well loved. Same way you have received the redemption of God. But then you are not cognizant of the fact that that is enough. Now in their desire. You remember when when they were provided with food, manna, they were like, Tungerudi uko kwenye tulitoka. How can we be feeding on these things? And they had plenty. So much that they were told, when it stays, please do not keep. There is enough for today. You know, even when you give instructions, there are others that will deliberately go against the instruction. Kuna wenye waliweka. They didn't have it the, the next day. It wasn't edible. Ah, but God still supplied. Now I am giving this in context. When you study in detail, you like you, you know. But anyway, they had enough. And yet they said, we should have gone back. Moses is away for a little while. When he comes back, they already have a God worship. Because they are busy. I was sharing and I said that it is possible that someone is very busy but idle. That is why you don't have to engage in everything. I used to feel bad and I've told you this. When I'd just gotten born again in my mind I had to go for everything that has God mentioned in it. When you hear a conference there, you are there. As you're still there, you hear there is another seminar there, you are there. That is a restless mind. And yet you've been called to rest. Now me, when I hear a message, when I hear a meeting at Iwami, I am there. When I hear a, a, a conference at Iwami, I am there. And there are other conferences around. Yes, they are there. But I know how to value my time. When I was starting, I told you, these things that we share with you, you cannot exhaust them, even if you choose to just be there 24 hours, seven days a week. The, teaching just of the, the teachings of the week, you cannot exhaust them. So you have quite so much for you to be too busy, being not busy. Verse 2 says, okay, let's wait. Now we won't finish this thing. Eh? And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. This we've explained it when we were speaking baptisms in 2020. You should go back and see that series. It has eight parts. 
they were given under the instruction of Moses. As far as long as they listened to Moses, they were safe. Verse 3. And they all ate the same spiritual meat. They were provided for. Next verse. They drank the same spiritual drink. The rock that followed them was Christ. Even when they have a lot, instead of digging deeper into the a lot that they have, they want something on top of what they have got. Saints, it is a challenge when as a believer you are running to top up on what you have received. It is not like in the world where you say, ah, one job is not enough. Indeed, these days, one job is not enough. Of course, for some, there are others for whom half a job is enough. Not enough as in wametosheka, lakini in a later pesa mingi sana, so much that they don't need to do anything else. If you want to know that, go and ask brokers. My friend, a broker is someone that will get a million right now out of nowhere. Anafinya tu simu hapa. You haven't heard anything at all. Alafu anakuuliza, ungependa kukula nini? That is half a job. And then there are some others, eight to five. Wengine wetu tuliendanga eight to, to one. One ile ya AM. Three to one. Nine to, to seven. And then you come out and you wonder whether you've wasted your time. Or you've really been working. But as for these, they had enough. Yet to them, it wasn't enough. That is where scattering starts from. Next verse. But with many of them, God was not well pleased because they were overthrown in the wilderness. If you do not see the sufficiency in Christ Jesus and you run with the affairs of the wilderness, the wilderness will overcome you. It will overthrow you. Those are the believers you find spending the entirety of their breathable life here on earth. Struggling. Let me say this in context. You are 100% born again and in context you are going to heaven even when you are struggling on earth. But God has not made you for struggle. Come out of the struggle. Believe God. Believe God. Amen. And this belief, believing becomes, comes because you've dwelt in the word and learned in the word. I want us to see chapter 49 Psalms but I'm not going to start on it because we shall not finish it. He says in verse 1 Can you help me read that three to one? Uh huh. Uh huh. So he's saying, Hear this, all you people. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world. And in verse two, he says, Both low and high. You know, there are some things you can say, and then they say, uh, Tell them. Preach to them, pastor. I'm not preaching to them. I'm preaching to you. I love to hear it when you say, preach to me, pastor. That is for me, pastor. Hey, tell them. <laughs> you go back. Then there's a lot of struggle because they were not here. They were not hearing. Because when you're speaking, they're like, that message is for the low. Oh, that message is for the high. Ah, that one is for the poor. You know, you have to speak depending on... He says, hear this, all you nations and all you inhabitants. 
both low and high, rich and poor, together. Oh, he saw his meaning. It is the power of God unto salvation for all that believe. The Jew and the Gentiles, there is no, there is no, there is no difference. So when we speak about the benefits of redemption, there is no difference between the person that may look, according to your physical eyes, look in a better esteemed position because it is for all of us. So we listen together. This word has been given that the rich, according to the standards of the world, the poor, according to the standards of the world, the low, L-O-W, according to the standards of the world, and the high, according to the standards of the world, it pertains to them. And that is why we regard no man according to their status. We regard no man according to their standards, even as the world has esteemed them, because this word is for them. Altogether. Like. So my mouth will speak wisdom, verse 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. We want to start from this, and we, we build on that next week, even as we see redemption. Please do not tire. Do not tire to listen to these things. They are already now plus this. There will be 12 parts for you to chew on. Go back. Visit them. The high and the low alike. The rich and the poor alike. The esteemed and the least esteemed alike. This word is for you. He has said, I would not that you should be ignorant. Because there are some that because of ignorance they started manufacturing their own things and they were overthrown in the wilderness. The wilderness overcame. As for you, you are victorious. Only because you know. Let's be on our feet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Utaishi. Ukimtazama Amen na mwenyewe Haleluya Utaishi ukimtazama You know there are some people that look at this that we teach as foolishness because they want you to do a lot, struggle a lot, strive a lot. Believe that your life is a life of, of observing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And then you are transformed into the same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God. So there is no gimmick to this. It is just that you look into the Word. The Word describes you. You believe the description and you walk the description. Amen na mwenyewe Haleluya Unaishi ukimtazama Tis recorded in his word Haleluya It is only that you look and live is recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and live hallelujah all with unveiled faces when we behold and we are ignorant 
we are not ignorant of the things that we behold. But rather, the low, the high, the rich, the poor, pay attention, give ear all together. We live. How I wish that as the saints at Iwami Ministries, we watch alike. We watch alike. We listen alike. We hear alike. We pay heed alike. Because that will ignite a fire in our midst and then we shall soar above. Together. Praise the Lord. That is the desire of the Lord for you. And for that challenge, observe the Lord. Behold the Lord. And then he will sort you even as he has destined you for greatness. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So let's start from verse 3 next week. Even as we understand the beauty of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Saints, when you give yourself to these things, the word is able to make you quick. To make you bear fruit in Jesus' name. So receive this even as truth for you. And it will bear you fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us give. And we give because we are blessed. Hallelujah. Let me just give you enough time to give. Eh? If you want to give via uh, Mpesa, send to 0114-970840. But if you want to give in cash, take an envelope from the ushers and then put your giving there and then immediately return to the usher. Amen. Father, I thank you for the giving of the saints. They give because they are blessed. And even, Lord, as they give, they, they understand that their giving goes a long way to facilitate the work of ministry. I pray that they continue to prosper in the work that they do, in their businesses, in their uh, employment, and, Lord, that they may have enough for themselves and enough for them that are around them and even enough to continue facilitating the work of ministry. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We come again on Thursday. Tuesday first for our Tuesday fellowship. And then on Thursday for our discipleship Bible class. Friday for our worship service. And then on Sunday, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8 for our prayer fellowship. And then like we've done today. Amen. Find out for me why Faith Atyang is not here. But receive greetings from Japheth. Japheth is in Kericho now for his attachment. He told me to specifically send his regards to you. Amen. To you, the body of Christ. I don't know if I told you. For you, yours was special, sweetheart. So receive greetings from Japheth. Amen. You are blessed. You are covered. Is anyone going to be busy during the week? Anyone going to be busy during the week? May that business bear fruit. That as you're busy, you're not busy too, but it bears fruit. As you wake up in the morning to go to work, may it bear fruit for you in the name of Jesus. And tangible fruit, sile ya kawaida in Jesus' name. And the peace of God goes with you. The life of God goes with you. You are blessed even as you come out of here. You are blessed even as you walk back home. You are blessed even as you embark on your activities, duties during the week in the name of Jesus. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit follows you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a beautiful Sunday and a beautiful week. See you on Tuesday. Shalom.